So we're here with Max Screw um, from Intrepid Cameras, um, founder, I guess CEO. How many titles do you have? Uh, all of them. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> okay. No, it's, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're here at the headquarters. They just moved in uh, to a bigger space, and yeah. um, we're going to do a quick, well, a Q and A. Let's well, say yeah. quick, just in case it extends to uh, longer. You can take as long as you want. That's so fine. I'm going to start with the first very basic question. It would be, uh, why did you start um, Intrepid Cameras? So it was, yeah, it was three, three years ago, um, I was started to build my own large format cameras because basically I noticed that they were either really expensive or really old and required work. And I got quite interested in sort of the, the process of building it and how that informed the process of what you're taking pictures of. And I started, um, started a blog about that and then looked into um, open sourcing a large format camera and how maybe people could make their own from one plan. And then from that, um, people started getting in touch, being like, this is a great idea. And the ball started rolling and then eventually we moved on to doing uh, the first Kickstarter, which was to basically take the concept of um, an open source camera to a camera that actually was just affordable and everyone could have access to. And we'll, we build it and then you have it. And that was kind of how it all got started. Okay, um, is the blog still up? I think it's probably still there, yeah. Do you remember the name? Um, I think it's just Maxim Grew, and then whatever like the Tumblr URL thing is maximgrew.tumblr.com. Yeah, it'll still be there with some pretty te terribly written articles about <laughs> why I like Lomography cameras and things like that. Okay, well that's always good to know. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so your first Kickstarter was um, the one that you know started the business yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. idea of it. Did you imagine it to start a real business or was it kind of nah. a project that it would be nah. a one of? I um, went into it sort of thinking, well, I'll give this a go because a lot of people said to give it a go. So I'll give it a go, but I don't think it will lead anywhere. I mean, I wanted it to, obviously. And mm -hmm. then um, when we got the support that we did, I was absolutely sort of blown away that. Okay. Yeah, that. It's been how many years after that? Um, so that was 2014, so um, yeah, getting on three years now, I think it'd be three, it would have been three years in September. I think. Okay. That's yeah, it was, three years in September. So you had a first prototype that was that wooden um, knobbed one and yeah. all that. Before you even launched that, um, the rewards, you upgraded it to a better camera. Yeah. The support was bigger than you thought, I guess. Yeah. And you improved the concept while you were building it. Exactly, yeah. And now we're in version uh, 2.0. We are. Which was shipped, uh, started off just after you shipped all the first rewards. Was yeah, it? so we shipped all the first rewards and then about three, four months later, once we'd had a good chunk of feedback, we, um, yeah, we changed the design based on the feedback we'd had from the, um, so I guess the first Kickstarter people were sort of beta testers, really. Uh -huh. And uh, you are, well, now you launched the 8x10 Kickstarter, yep. which was very successful. Also, again, over what you expected, I feel. Yeah, a lot. By, yeah. Not, be, not because I don't think you're ready, just because I can see um, the warehouse is full of cameras and yep. parts and you're building um, up to 400 8x10s. Yeah, 400 8x10s, 8 8 yeah. Which, which is, is pro probably the biggest build ever. Uh, that'd be cool if it is. I don't know how we'd ever find out, I guess, talk to Lin Hoff or Yeah, talk to like Linhoff or someone, one of the big manufacturers. But yeah, um, a massive, massive undertaking that um, has had its challenges, definitely. But yeah. we're on top also, of it now. <laughs> also moving to a new warehouse uh, during the build. Yeah. Uh, was that new, uh, known to you that you had It was known move? that we had a date, but we'd set the initial shipping date before that. But then when we missed that deadline because of the issues with machinery delivery times, um, it became apparent that we were going to have to move mid-build and the logistics of sorting that out was... Uh, c continue building <laughs> while you're moving yeah, into exactly. a different space. It exactly, has to be yeah. challenging, that's for sure. I have to say you've been here for three weeks, uh, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. And it looks like you've been here for a few months. So, And there's some na people can't see this, but there's neighbors next to you who look like they just moved in. So, <laughs> yeah, we've got... I mean, you guys did a lot of work in three weeks. Yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of late nights. Um, a lot of working weekends but you know we had a lot of people counting on us to do this task that we'd promised them and the thought of sort of not giving it your all just didn't really occur it was just yeah everyone just worked really hard there's not just me there's loads of other people <laughs> here as well yeah and the army of volunteers helped out and yeah we got it done in three weeks which is yeah not too bad 
Okay, and the question that everyone will ask, maybe the video will be posted, um, and the uh, question will be asked, or, um, solved already, or answered. When will the 8x10 start delivering? Today we actually uh, recorded a, Max so yeah. building the first um, series of 8x10s, yeah. um, it's not a prototype anymore. Yeah, exactly, the first production model. So I guess that's good. Um, Nico can confirm that it's not just me saying they're nearly ready, they are very much nearly ready. So yeah, we've got the first one. I was really happy with how that came out. That was a nice moment to know that all the parts go together properly, yeah, yeah. as we knew already, but it's nice to confirm it. Anyway. And once again, you've upgraded from the Kickstarter version of the AI yeah, yeah, loads has changed, to the yeah. final product people are gonna um, get. Yeah. So you've done little upgrades, so yeah. it's a better camera. Much better, yeah. Again, like the first time. Uh, do you think people will be happy with the upgrades? Do you feel confident they'll like them? Yeah, I think if people got into it because they knew they wanted an affordable, lightweight, compact camera, and it's more lightweight, more compact than we promised, and plus it's got sort of lots of little features, lots of little refinements, things that you'd expect on sort of a high-end camera, but also all the versatility that sort of Intrepid offers in terms of not having to spend all your money on the camera, you can also spend some money on other parts. So yeah, yeah I think people are going to be really happy with it. I, okay. And if they're not, then let us know and we'll change, we'll adapt, you know. Okay. Um, now to talk about um, the future uh -huh. of it. So you've launched the 8x10, the 4x5, um, you are in the second version of the 4x5, you're thinking about moving on to a third version of the 4x5 yes. sometime in the future. Yeah, sort of. I don't want to put a date on it because the um, we still have a lot to learn from this camera. But yeah, uh, in next some point next year, we'll draw a line in the sand and we'll come out with a new version. Yeah. And um, are you planning apart from the? Also, you did a four, uh, eight by ten film holder. Mm -hmm. You've already said you won't be doing a four by five because we there are plenty not, of them nope. and it's too much work for the size and the exactly. price. Exactly. Um, it's not. Yes, yeah, we've. I've been quite happy. It's not saying we're going to be doing it in the foreseeable future. No. And um, any other projects you mentioned this morning there was something that you could uh, announce yeah during our chat today exactly or... yeah so i'll be able to show you a, the prototype of it later uh, i need to nip out and get something <laughs> but um yeah so we are moving from cameras to enlargers um oh. so i don't know if you'll be familiar with the graph larger back mm -hmm. essentially it's a light source that snaps onto the back of your camera mm -hmm. and with using the Intrepid because it's so lightweight it can be used as an enlarger really comfortably so if you imagine you've got the light source at the back with a, um, a method of holding film flat and then some um, special glass that holds the film flat you tip it on its side on a tripod or we'll have a mount as well projects the image down onto your, uh, the bit where you put your uh, paper and yeah, you have an enlarger. So, so you're going to move from not only making cameras and film holders, but now people that buy the 8x10, because one of your biggest, uh, I feel, uh, successes with the 8x10 was you not only announced an 8x10, but you announced the f uh, 8x10 film holder, which exactly. is, yeah. like, as we all know, hard source, uh, only being built by Toyo and a few wooden uh -huh. um, film holders yeah. that are not in the cheap grade. No. So you made the uh, inexpensive 45 mm -hmm. pounds, if I'm not wrong. Yep. At least but on the Kickstarter it was 45 pounds. I mean, you could go back 10, 15 years and you still wouldn't be able to get an 8x10 holder for 45 pounds no, probably. No, not new. <laughs> not new, no. Um, and now you're going to try to close the circle so people can enlarge. Exactly. Because it's so one of the hard, hardest things to source right now. It's a 4x5 or yeah. 8x10 is extremely hard to source. Exactly. Enlarger. And by, we've just, taken what is the concept of an enlarger, completely turned it on its head, looked at how we can use what people have. This is an enlarger you can put in your backpack, you know, which you could literally take an enlarger out. If you're going on a, on a trip, say Iceland, a lot of people like to go to Iceland to use large for and why wouldn't you? You could literally bring the enlarger with you and in your bathroom of your hotel, make prints whilst you're out there. That's so what we're kind of, <laughs> which is crazy. It's almost like the concept of the lab box. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like developing film but, in the yeah, park, exactly, you know? yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're looking at the whole, not just cameras, the whole ecosystem of how you can go from taking a picture to making a print of it and looking at how to keep that entirely analog so you don't have to scan, scan and, or do and, anything yeah. else. Which no, is, yeah. No, I think the biggest problem in large format, as you know, was the price of the cameras. You made that. Mm -hmm. The film holder for larger formats, you made that. And next step would be, yeah, scanning is Printing. nice, but printing is really hard. I have an 8x10 yeah. larger and I can assess that every time I show a picture, someone says if I'm selling it at least, <laughs> yeah. and um, they're huge and heavy and expensive and you can find mm -hmm. them. Um, so, so that'll be good news. Yeah, so we're not, 
We're not aiming at like the exhibition print. This is for the people who use Intrepid cameras who want to have fun with it. If you, I mean, you, uh, there's no reason why you couldn't make sort of an exhibition quality print I with it. You probably have to have a bit more care exactly, on your exactly. work when yeah, you're doing yeah. something, just like your cameras. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're very flexible, but they also have their quirks. Exactly, that yeah. Better cameras don't have. Of course. Because, of course, they have bubble levels everywhere, yeah, locks yeah. everywhere, and everything's real smooth because they made everything out of, you know, milled aluminum yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, it's the same concept of yeah. you have to check. A few of more course. things on the user side. But we're also going to make it so you have, in the same way with our cameras, you have like that freedom to not worry that you've got this incredibly expensive, finely tuned object. Of you've course. got a freedom to be creative with it. No, yeah. And you, it's you, going to be might. hackable. It's gonna, you can do whatever you want with it. It's going to be all sorts of things. It's okay. done, got a lot of plans, and I'll show you a prototype later. I think okay, you'll like okay. it. <laughs> yeah, we'll try to include that so we can yeah, see yeah. it in the middle. But, um, well, that's exciting to see. Um, also, Will you think about making any other uh, format cameras in the middle or on so the long way? We were looking at 5x7, um, the well-loved but obscure format of 5x7. Mm -hmm. um, and we think the simplest solution for that is because our 8x10 is so small, um, we're going to do a reducing back, see how that goes. And then you will essentially have a 5x7 camera that's not much bigger and probably lighter than most 5x7 mm -hmm. cameras. And I think that'll be a good stopgap for the 5x7 fans. And then in the future, we may go bigger. But for now, I think we're going to concentrate on the 4x5, the 8x10, and some accessories to make them really versatile, creative objects. Yeah, you can make like a 4x10 for the 8x10. Exactly, you exactly. Could do yeah. a, which actually, for your 8x10, you can make the half dark slides for mm -hmm. yeah. using for the two, holders, yeah. two, um, two 4x10s on a one sheet, which yeah. is a very popular thing people do. Mm -hmm. OK, well, that's good news. Um, then, okay, now to the questions people have asked me. Uh, first question that everyone is asking, when are you shipping that? Actually, you can see Max is... Uh, I'm, I'm shipping it now. shipping right now as we talk, so we don't stop working. Well, he doesn't stop working. Um, and um, people are curious about the 8x10. I've had feedback of all the parts and pieces. We did the first one today. Well, you did it. Uh -huh. I filmed it. And um, what do you think that maybe you will ship all those cameras because that's the first question everyone's asking. Yeah, that's, and that's fair enough. You know. Yeah, they, they're expecting it's around an eight week um, delay so far. Of course, yep. there's been troubles throughout. But when do you think maybe you'll be able to be done with Ship. the first shipment? Um, so shipping, I mean, shipping itself is a major process. So we'll start shipping, be fully ramped up in shipping by the end of this month. <laughs> yeah, so I expect it will take us two months to ship every single one. Um, so I would, I mean, you've seen it here. It's a huge task. It's, uh, it's really hard to give exact deadlines. And I, I'm always sort of reluctant to tell people an exact date because this is the first time we've, this is the first time anyone's ever done this. And it's almost impossible to tell how long it's going to take. All we know is that we're working flat out. And our best guess is that it'll take around two months from the end of November. So we're talking, the last people will get them early 2018, probably end of January, something like that. Okay. That's, okay. that's like, yeah. basically will be the end of the first batch. All 400 will be out by the well, end it's, of it's, It has to be complicated to make 400 cameras at once. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. Then other questions that people are asking are about the, um, the parts for the cameras. Like some people have been having trouble with losing a screw and stuff like that. Yeah. I, is that something you constantly work on, uh, delivering yeah. extra bits and pieces? I remember on our Skype interview, you mentioning that you would give a lifetime guarantee. I mean, exactly, the warranty. The yeah, running, yeah. I guess that there's spare parts and stuff like that. Yeah, so we keep a good stock of um, spare parts, and if someone loses something or breaks something, they just have to um, email us, and we will send them another one. Um, the warranty policy is if it broke and it was our fault, no hassle, we'll cover your shipping costs. Yeah, like your wood breaks in the middle. Yeah, of exactly. Yeah, of course, that's our fault. We'll cover any shipping costs to get it back to us, we'll repair it. It will cost you nothing, we'll do it as quick as we can. If you break anything on the camera, all we ask is that you cover the cost of getting it to us, and then we'll fix it for free and send it back as quick as we can. Um, simple, you know. We're, just, we're here to help out, you know. If you buy one, we're here for you. That's the thing that you guys are still, well, still around. I mean, yeah. the, the problem with all cameras is if something breaks, that's it, unless you have exactly. someone that can really fix it themselves. Exactly, yeah. And that's going to probably cost more than the camera's worth. The camera itself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm going to ask you a few questions that people have asked me, and I'm going to read because I'm very bad at memorizing. <laughs> uh, question number one would be, there are some parts that are easy to lose, like the knob attaches uh, front to the base of the camera, which is actually loose. I saw yeah. that, so you got to be careful with that. You do? Yeah. Um, or the metal knobs on the two sides of the back that I sometimes take it out for the tilting movement because of that. Um, will be Intrepid start selling spare parts on the online store? But you actually just answered yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, ship it for you don't have to. Um, it would be overcomplicated to have it on the store. Just email us what parts you need and we'll send them out. And um, we've okay. got your address information from the original order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No well, worries, yeah. unless he bought it secondhand. Of course. Is... But even, yeah, it's fine. You need something, just let us know. This, this, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, different mechanism for attaching the ground glass to the body. Ah, oh, yes, the, uh, the bungee cords. Yes, we were talking about this earlier. Um, uh, he says the, um, the different mechanism for attaching the ground glass to the body because sooner or later the elastic band will become loose. <coughs> also because the camera is so light, whenever I pull the ground glass to the film holder in, the whole camera wiggles and moves, makes mm -hmm. the shot out of focus. Interesting, okay. Um, so I wouldn't worry about the bungee cord losing its stretch. It's um, a really high quality material, I think. Um, a lot of people have, and rightly so, sort of assumptions that um, if it's not made of metal, it won't last. Uh, we've tested it thoroughly. We've never, and thousands of cameras, never once had a problem with the bungee cord. It works really well. It puts just the right amount of tension on the film holder, and um, we can. I mean, we can look into changing it. I'm more than happy to do some analysis of other designs, but I'm quite happy with how it works. Okay. Um, with the it moving, the um, the camera and um, maybe a bigger base plate on the tripod that's a symptom of the camera being really light so there's trade-offs for that which is fair um, or maybe like i mean really yeah like, <laughs> tend, like how do you say like over over tightening tightening the, the screws probably would help too yeah that making sure everything's tight you don't want to over tighten because the metal's aluminium and the screws are steel so you could pull the you could i mean it would take thread. a it would take a lot of force but you could pull the thread out if you did it if you over tightened a lot it might weaken it so but. you got to tighten it but don't over tighten yeah i mean you can feel in your hand if you're going too far with any screw you know if you're going to yeah. Um, and try a bigger base plate and... Um, and if that, if that happens, then it's your guy's fault, so you can <laughs> yeah, yeah, replace it. Of course, it, so, of course, yeah. more than happy to replace it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, bigger base plate and a tripod, and maybe try weighing your tripod down. Um, a good way of doing that is having like a... But what I understand is he says that when he puts the ground glass, like um, he lifts the ground glass to put it in, yep. like he loses focus, I guess the camera could move, but there's no movement in the back. No, so the back's rigid, so I can only fixed. assume it's... Um, the camera moving on, the whole camera moving on top of the tripod. So I guess bigger tripod plate, mm -hmm. weighing down the tripod, tightening the screws. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, as you said, there's always a trade-off between very lightweight cameras and movement. So of yeah. course, that's one of my, one of my questions, what it could be, but it, there's, no, there's no answer to that. Like what happens if it's too light, you know? Because at the end, wind moves it easier. Like it will wobble a bit more. Yeah. The camera could be lighter. Um, we no, or less light in the sense yeah. of like being a bit more rigid maybe yeah well we we got down to so they're 900 grams we got to that weight and we thought well we won't go any further because you need a certain amount of mass to keep it stable and the vast majority of people have no problems with them um, using the camera if it's a, if it's um <laughs> if it's uh really windy you're going to struggle with any, any problem, camera any camera yeah Okay, well, the next uh, question would be interchangeable systems. Since the Intrepid camera is so easy to assemble and disassemble, may have an interchangeable system so we can change the bellows, longer wood base plate mm -hmm. uh, for macro. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. Um, I've, yeah, a few people have asked for something similar and it's been on my mind. It's on my list of things to um, for the get, third around to, yeah, get around to prototyping. Um, yeah, the third generation, we're going to include um, the ability to have bag bellows and um, because you can remove the bellows on this one, but it's a bit of a process. You have to physically unscrew them. Um, so something simpler. Yeah, um, customizability. Yeah, you could do um, an extender for mm -hmm. the, um, let's see, the front standard yeah. screws so on the bed. So that's something that could happen already. Already, yeah. And so you so could you have could it, it could screw into that and then that. And add like two more screws. You could literally have screws. another one of these and screw it on and then you've got that much again. Yeah. So that could be something that could be implemented. But you would have to have um, longer bellows to do that. Oh, the bellows won't give? The bellows much. will go to 300 millimeters. So, okay. 
So that would be an issue. You would need the bellows yeah. and the bass, like longer bass, to go together. Exactly. Like you would with yeah, you would with any, unless you were buying a four by five that was sort of intended for macro photography and had an extremely long bellows reach. But then the camera itself would, would be much bigger and it wouldn't be stable. So okay. it, it trade-offs. You know, it depends what you no, need. No, yeah, yeah, it's it's reasonable. There's always so much you can do with exactly, one yeah. system. Um, he says, uh, the next question would be new, new design for the Intrepid 4x5 to have more movement. We said that that would be number, uh, version number three. Yep. Like the 8x10, you can tilt the back backwards, but on the 8x10, you can remove two big knobs on each side in order to do it. I don't know if I get that question, but basically the back movements would yeah. be something you implement on a version three. I guess you don't want to do minor one of changes per batch, but you want to do a version three with three or four big things. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, like I said, then we're going to sort of draw a line in the sand at some point next year behind this one, and then we're going to do a, a big upgrade. It's not going to be incremental. Version 3 is going to have a lot of new features. Okay. It's going to be a really exciting camera, and we're going to keep the frost the same. Are you going to do the version 3? No Kickstarter for that. It'll no, just be, no, it'll uh, be for the website, a yeah. new camera, yeah, and yeah. that's it. Um, then he asked something that I think is important in a certain way. Better quality for metal knobs and screws since I traveled with the Intrepid 4x5 for a month in Southeast Asia area. Mm -hmm. After one month, the metal knobs and screws started to rust. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Um, so they, the metal knobs on the side are uh, rust proof. Um, I can only assume he means these small screws, which I will look into. Um, might have been a bad, we buy the screws in small packets and you get lots of packets, might have been a bad packet. I've not heard of them rusting before, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll get in touch with the supplier and make, check the material and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if that's something we can change to make okay. it better, then yeah, happy to do that. And um, then he says, new design with stained plywood, which I guess if you guys are offering uh, colored <laughs> bellows, <Yeah. laughs> maybe that's it. Yeah. Bubble levels, I do know the 8x10 comes with bubble it levels. It does, yeah, the new 4x5 uh, I guess the as new well. 4x5 will have that too. Exactly, like stained yeah. plywood, will that be an option or...? Uh, not something that we're looking into, no. Um, I mean, people could stain the plywood themselves. Um, I think offering that level of customizability would be something we'd look into when we were far less busy. Um, changing uh, aspects of the manufacturing process for customizability it's adds a huge a amount lot. of time to, uh, particularly when you're doing things in batches, to have to pull away a certain amount of parts and do something different to them. Um, so it's not something we'll be doing just yet. One of the questions I've also been getting is about higher quality cameras. If you're thinking of going into a higher grade kind of camera, not so much of a plywood or maybe um, compete with other brands that do a premium yeah. or a bit more premium cameras. Is um, the version three? Let's start with this question. Version three will it have an upgrade in price. Do you think you can keep the low price? Yep, we'll keep, it will stay at two hundred and fifty pounds. It won't change price. Um, we'll be using similar materials that we're used to working with. Um, the things that will change will be functionality based. Mm -hmm. um, it'll still be a plywood and aluminium camera. Uh, in terms of doing a premium offering, I think we found our niche offering something that is either a great beginner's camera or a great trekking camera. Um, or and, and or a beating up camera. Or one, a great beating one, up camera. One that you don't mind taking to somewhere exactly. extreme and yeah. breaking or... I think we'd be sort of going, not against, but I think we would be spending time not on our original goal, which is to make an affordable camera for everyone if we started looking into really premium offerings. Um, in particular, if we could add all the functionality we wanted to an affordable camera, but then we're just simply selling something made of nicer wood. Uh, it's not really something yeah, we're going to... you would upgrade the wood, basically, or maybe made... Yeah. Uh, and that's, you know, I mean, that's purely... Yeah, I mean, that's like a preference thing on how your camera looks, which is not something we're... Um, we're more interested in getting these cameras out there and them being functional and really fun to use and great value for money. Uh, we're not as interested in people who want something that looks the best okay. in terms of like um, the shiniest camera. <laughs> yeah. um, and the last question to finish this off would be, do you see a day that things will slow down? We were talking about that earlier. Um, so far, you're over, uh, let's say, 
not over, but like your full orders coming in. Yeah, we're, time, is, we're, is, we're very busy, yeah. Um, Do you see a day that maybe things will slow down or? I mean, it's, uh, the size of the market is a really interesting thing. It's almost, it's way bigger than we thought, but it's incredibly hard to know how, just how big it is. Um, I don't know, I hope things won't slow down. I hope I like being busy. I hope we can continue to do what we do. Um, if we got to a stage where we moved more to and like actual production slowed down, I think we'd start to look at um, doing classes and, and workshops, things like that, getting people in um, and exploring things like that. But yeah, yeah we'll, I think- continue having, I mean, being able to afford um, building cameras. Yeah. But there's so many cameras you can you can make. I mean, the market, as you say, is bigger than we think, but it can't be infinite. No. It's not a pro digital camera that you just use and once its lifespan is yeah. done, you get a new exactly. one and exactly. no, this kind of lasts for, not ever, but it lasts for a very long time. Yeah. And I don't think we'd ever want to produce items that would just throw away consumable things. These are, you know, large of my camera is something to be cherished. Okay. And the last uh, question would be, uh, any questions you would have liked to be asked that you would love to say that you never have the time because you're too busy building cameras <laughs> or answering emails from people that are curious? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so something that we get a really interesting insight to that a lot of photographers might not know about is because we get the statistics of who's viewing our website, who's buying cameras. So we get to see a massive overview of who large format photographers are. And what is really interesting that almost 90% of them are men. So what I would ask the community is what can we do to make this less of a male dominated um, thing? Uh, there's no reason why it should be that way. <laughs> what can, yeah, what can we do as a community to make this more, less, yeah, yeah, male yeah. yeah, exactly. There's a huge. Uh, I have that gap. on my YouTube channel. Uh, you get statistics mm -hmm. too of age, uh, countries, and such. Yep. And I have like uh, I think it's 93% male, seven percent uh, um, female. Mm -hmm. And I also always wonder what could I do to get. I know there's a ton of large format women photographers, um, very successful ones. Yeah. I mean, we got Sally Mann people like exactly. that. Exactly huge in the large format, but it seems to not grasp on women shooting large format. I don't see any uh, photographers, galleries, or uh, photography brands being specific only for men, yeah. or not open to, to a, it all being yeah. equal. Yeah, I just think it's a male-dominated industry and thing. I just think, I think it'd it's be... A, like our love for gear and the love for I think that machines. Like, I think that has something to do with it. I think, yeah, the love for gear is an element. I just think it's something, I don't know, I don't have any answers to this, I think it's something that we should, um, we should try to, mm -hmm. try, to like, try to work I out. I have to say, I do workshops in Spain and yeah. um, I think it's like a 75% of my uh, students are women, yeah. which I love seeing. That's I great. had a, yeah. a workshop that was all women and me yeah. and I had a great time and it was yeah. so interesting well, course, because they're yeah. eager to learn, yeah. but it, I don't know why, I guess maybe but not on yeah. the online community. Well, you go online and you'd think that. Yeah, it was, yeah, because well, it, it is same. just men. Yeah. But yeah, you, the forums and all those are exactly the same. It's mostly men dominated, <laughs> which it's is pretty sad. It is sad, you're right. I got, two, <laughs> I got two daughters, so I hope that they, if want to, uh, will be able to yeah. take part in photography too. But yeah, well, thanks for answering the Q&A. Um, no worries, I happy I hope to. people find it interesting. It's going to be pretty long, but um, yeah. <laughs> they're into something like this. They yeah. probably want to watch yeah, it. Yeah, I reckon so. So yeah, uh, thank you, Max. And no, uh, you are one of the 60. Yeah, how many got? Yeah, two, four, uh, it's like 20 odd. If you got the wrong bellows uh, color. Yeah, if you get the right sneakers. <laughs> so yeah. Speaking of, well, this one was red, I think. Yes, correct.